Is the Grand Canyon radioactive? The short answer is, to a certain degree, yes. Uranium is a relatively common element, about 500 times more abundant than gold. The Grand Canyon is a gash in the earth a mile deep and eight miles wide. Certainly some of these radioactive elements are exposed. At the Grand Canyon, uranium is most commonly found in breccia pipes, essentially a tube of dissolved rubble that can contain elements like copper, gold, and to our interest, uranium. There are likely two springs in the Grand Canyon area that have an elevated level of radioactivity simply because of the natural occurrence of these breccia pipes. However, these are in infrequently visited areas. But in general, undisturbed, the naturally occurring minerals in the Grand Canyon pose no risk for visitors. Undisturbed, that is, it's not well known that the first industry at Grand Canyon was mining, not tourism. For example, the last chance mine on Horseshoe Mesa started in the 1890s mining copper, closing in 1907. The Park Service put two signs warning of the risk of radioactive exposure near the mine as uranium was present in the tailings, despite the fact they were mining copper. Those signs are still there today, although the extent of the risk remains ambiguous. But starting in the nuclear era, uranium became a valuable resource. There have been a number of uranium mines operating near the park. For example, the Pinyon Plain mine is operating south of the park within 10 miles of the rim, and it's within a National Monument's boundaries, but it was grandfathered in. But some of those trucks you see barreling down the highway on your way into Grand Canyon may be carrying uranium. And it's a little known fact that one of the richest uranium mines in the US was located right on the rim of the Grand Canyon. Located just two miles west of the historic village, between Powell and Maricopa points, the Orphan Mine was the richest uranium mine in the US and operated from the 1950s through 1969. And here's the unbelievable part. For all the years the uranium mine operated, a hotel with outdoor dancing and an outdoor swimming pool operated right alongside of it. The hotel gift shop even sold uranium samples. In fact, in a similar vein, three five-gallon buckets of radioactive rocks likely from the Orphan Mine, were stored in a museum building at Grand Canyon for decades before being recognized in 2018. That's a building the general public, including me, visits to do research on the history of the canyon. The various authorities evaluated the buckets and concluded they posed no risk to the employees and visitors, but the precautions they took look pretty serious. In the end, the buckets were reportedly carried out on a mop handle by employees using rubber gloves from a grocery store. And do you know what they did with them? They dumped them back at the Orphan Mine site. Now, all of these things make dramatic and interesting stories, but the important question to most people is, is there any risk? I'm happy to do research on these topics and to report the results that I've found but here's where the topic exceeds my expertise. All I can do is report the evaluations of the risk I've read. Beyond that, you'll need to make up your own mind. I'm confident people with training and expertise in this area will write in the comments below, so you might want to read their more expert commentary. The Orphan Mine site currently has a double fence and a locked gate. Several evaluations have been done of the risk the site may pose, but there seems to be no conclusive evidence it's dangerous for a casual visitor. The same with the mine tailings on Horseshoe Mesa. Of course, you probably would not want to build a house over the mine site. I mean, radon is a risk even in non-mined areas. Nor would I personally want to spend time in the mine shaft itself, 
so likely there's little risk from a brief visit to the surface of these mine sites. But it turns out that uranium mining has its biggest impact on groundwater, and that is an issue here. Contamination from the Orphan Mine is a concern because uranium in oxidized form is highly soluble and mobile in water. That means it can travel through groundwater and end up in springs that people and wildlife rely on. While most springs in the Grand Canyon region meet federal safety standards, a handful, especially near the Orphan Mine, do not. And because groundwater moves slowly through fractured rock, contamination could persist for decades or even centuries. The EPA says the maximum contaminant level for uranium is 30 micrograms per liter. I'm just going to say 30 units. A handful of springs down canyon and to the north of the Orphan Mine exceed this level, in particular springs in the Horn Creek area, one of which has a level of 293 units, almost 10 times the maximum acceptable level. Salt Springs also exceeds the maximum level slightly. Both Horn Creek and Salt Springs are on the Tonto Trail between Bright Angel Trail and Hermit Trail. I hiked to Horn Creek twice this year and I saw no warning signs about the radiation risk. In fact, the one sign with the name Horn Creek was on the ground and I did not even see it until after I was in the area for half an hour. The casual hiker would likely have no idea there's radiation risk drinking the water and may not even know they're at Horn Creek. There are signs warning of radiation on Horseshoe Mesa where the risk is minimal, but where the risk is more meaningful, there is no warning. Who knows? So is the Grand Canyon radioactive? The answer is nuanced. Yes, uranium is naturally present in the rocks. Yes, some areas, like near the Orphan Mine, have unsafe water. But no, the park as a whole is not dangerously radioactive. Personally, I have no concern about the risk of the abandoned mines when walking by. My only concern would be drinking water from Horn Creek or Salt Creek. But I only drink treated water at the canyon more from the risk of things like norovirus rather than radiation contamination, but that habit eliminates any personal concern about the risk of radiation at Grand Canyon. Please leave your thoughts and experiences in the comments below, and thank you for watching. <laughs>